Who doesn't love Kickstarter? I know I do. Just over the last year to year and a half, there have been so many success stories, I can't even count them all. Let's see, let's, what do we have? We have the, the Ouya, of course, uh, the leader in the home gaming console market. Uh, it surpassed all of its competition, the PS3 and the PS4, the 360 and the Xbox One, the Wii and the Wii U. It blew them out of the water with its high-end hardware and its vast selection of games that are available right now for purchase. I know when I saw Skyrim running at 1080p and 60 frames per second, my jaw dropped. Look at those graphics. I don't even think a high-end PC could handle them. There's magic in that little box, I tell you. And in five years, if we're lucky, fingers crossed, we'll all be waiting for that midnight launch of the Ouya Tuya. And let's not forget about Anita. Why, I have my box set collection of her DVDs sitting right next to me. It's a place of honor. I want it within reach so I can watch it at any time. All 18 episodes, 9 hours of content, and it was delivered so punctually. Three months after she got that money, she had all that done. That is such determination and hard work. That was $160,000 well spent. So I'm sure you could imagine the excitement people felt when a certain spiritual successor to a franchise that's been beloved for many years was announced on Kickstarter. I mean, just look at this pitch. this. <laughs> 23年間カプコンにいてオニムシャ、デッドライジング、そしてロックマンなど数多くのゲームを手掛けてきました。新しいコンセプトのプロジェクトを考えています。皆さんの力が必要です。ぜひ一緒に作りましょう。Well, holy fucking shit. It's Kenji and Afune in the flesh. And he's offering the fans a direct opportunity to do something they've always wanted, something they've been clamoring for for years. No longer will they have to suffer the abuses of Capcom, who mocks them and derides them and treats them terribly. After the debacle that was Mega Man Legends 3 being canceled, after all those titles they had been looking forward to in this universe had been essentially put on indefinite hiatus, and especially after that abysmal iPad game that was basically a slap in the face to every Mega Man lover that ever existed. And now, here's your opportunity, here's your chance to redeem yourself, to financially help him, to create something that's, that's new, but yet honors what Mega Man is. To create a, a successor that, that adheres to the things that you loved in those games from your childhood. I mean, who wouldn't jump at this opportunity? Well, that's exactly what the fans did. If we take a look at the Kickstarter page here, you'll see that the initial asking price was $900,000. That's what Inafune was asking for to, to create this new IP, Mighty Number no. 9. Well, they blew it out of the water. They, they surpassed that number as far as you could and got to $3.8 million. And that $3.8 million is going to be stretched. In fact, if you look at the goals that are listed, you've got extra stages, you've got versions for Macs and Linux, you've got PS3 and 360 and the Wii U, the PS4 and the Xbox One. They're going to add intro stages and bosses. They're going to add extra characters and challenge modes, beck and call online co-op mode. This almost sounds too good to be true. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, well, yeah, I suppose that that might possibly go wrong. But I, what do you... Uh, uh, this happens to be a particular post from people in the backer section. When you give money to a Kickstarter, you're allowed to comment about it. And uh, there was conversations going on, different input from different backers. And this happens to be from somebody named Dina, who had to say this. I have to join my voice with Lonnie's. As someone who cares about gender representation in games, please make Call a playable character. Or even better, make back a female bot altogether. It shouldn't and won't affect gameplay. I started on Mighty Number no. 9 fan art myself as a way to promote this Kickstarter and express my wish. We'll post the final soon. And of course on the right you have the picture she drew from her Twitter right there. That's the URL, the Petite Mistress one. This is her artwork, uh, her take on the character as a female bot. And this is pretty much where things started to go to shit. Now, of course, people giving different input doesn't really affect development. It doesn't really affect the company. I mean, after all, these are just people donating money. It's not like she has a job with them or, oh, fuck. Ah, uh, well, you know what? Maybe it's not that bad. A c community manager, right? Uh, artist is, it's kind of vague. It's not like, it's not like she's designing the robot. Uh, damn it! She's designing the robots. <laughs> Why not? Of course. Uh, of course. And this is where the story gets fun. Now, there's been a, a shitstorm that's developed over the last 24 hours or so around this particular person and their input into the game design and uh, their interaction with the community and the company. 
Uh, now, Dina did get the job. She was hired to work at Comcept. Uh, she's a community uh, manager. She actually lives in Japan. She's bilingual. You'd say, oh, well, she's qualified. What's, what is the problem with that? Well, it has to do with who Dina is and the potential agenda that she might be pushing. Well, of course, this started to make people a little bit worried. They were a bit skeptical if that money was going to be used for what they thought it was going to be used for. This seems like an awkward decision. Of course, as people are prone to do, and when I say people, I mean fucking retards, uh, there were those that said, oh, you're over-exaggerating. You people are, are just getting whipped up over nothing. She's simply a community manager and nothing else. Well, as we've seen from the screen cap from her Twitter, that's not true. She is part of the design team. She's an artist working at the company, so she's more than just a community manager. Well, once again, those, those fucking retards decided, hey, you know what, we're still going to be detractors and give you shit. Um, just because she's an artist at the company, just because she's a community manager, that doesn't mean anything. It's not like she's got some crazy feminist social justice agenda. You're just over-exaggerating. Eh, except for all the tweets about rape, about feminist frequency in her videos, about Bayonetta doing slutty poses in her trailers, uh, about uh, non-exploitive female characters and, you know, how great Beyond Two Souls is. And yet still, this wasn't enough. White knights are compelled to continue being retarded. And so they fell back even more, but they still, they still wouldn't completely budge. Right? Okay, so she, maybe she's a feminist, but she's not one of those crazy feminists. It's not like she's talking about preferred pronoun. Oh, wait, yes she is. People began digging through her Twitter, and what do you know? Preferred pronouns. And of course, of course it's from Sweden. Why wouldn't it be? Anytime the shit pops up, Sweden is somehow related. I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe they're on some kind of geographic fucking ley line for sexual equality. You know, maybe John Money, his birth was heralded in by a fucking constellation over Sweden. You know, some kind of fucking prophetic sign. Yet still, this wasn't enough. No, they backed from the position a little bit, but they wouldn't budge very much. Sure, you know, they'd been proven wrong that she was more than just a community manager. Sure, she appears to be a feminist. And sure, she appears to be a crazy fucking social justice warrior tumblerette. But that's still not enough. Why would they be upset? I mean, who cares? As long as she's a Mega Man fan who's played Mega Man games, there's not... Oh, wait. That's right. She hasn't played Mega Man games. The person on the project about the spiritual successor to Mega Man, who's the community manager between the people who gave money to the project and the actual developers, a person who's working as an artist at this company, doesn't really play Mega Man all that much. Never really a, a Mega Man player, but I do like 2D games, and my friends BF are working on it, so I support it. So as you might imagine, this of course really started to worry people. I mean, here we have somebody who appeared on the Kickstarter and started saying things like, oh, we should start swapping genders and we need a strong woman, you know, a female protagonist. Switch, swap those genders, drop those pronouns. Who suddenly is now working at the company and they're possibly even designing the robots in the actual game. And then add on top of that that they're a feminist and that they're talking about crazy ass Tumblrette shit. And then the icing on the cake right? The uh, cherry on top of the shit Sunday doesn't really play Mega Man. So again, you could possibly imagine why that might freak out people a little bit, especially after they gave money to this project. Now this is the part where it really starts to pick up steam. Uh, again, these conversations were taking place on uh, a website, but of course there's also Comcept's Mighty Number no. 9 website itself, which happens to have a forum section. So if you were a backer, if you gave money, you have access to the forum section. That's how you get into it. Well, people found out, and they weren't so thrilled about it, and threads started popping up. Now again, Dina is the community manager, so guess who gets to respond to the threads about this? Dina, what is that response? You know what, let's play a game. Take a guess, what do you think the response is going to be? All these people who have given money to the project find out about this, they're getting riled up, they're not too pleased about it. How do you think a professional in that uh, position would respond? Well, the first response wasn't even hers. It was from another person who happens to be a part of the community management team who began to mod edit people's posts. They didn't even respond to the post. They just went in and gave a snarky little mod edit. <laughs> Again, you might imagine how that didn't go over so well. So now more people are starting to post. And they're getting even more agitated. They're asking some pretty good questions. Now what you need to understand is this isn't some, oh my god, all these people are attacking her. No, you, you can look. Here are some of the posts that were getting put up by people who were backers. 
and they're pointing out they're saying hey we'd like a response we found all of this stuff you know what's your side of the story tell us what's going on now at this point it might be a good idea to take a small break from this right as you can see all the people on the forums are starting to ask questions uh, but let's let's find out who Dina is how did she put herself forward to this community how did she introduce herself to the backers themselves well she accomplished this with a post on the uh, website itself under there's no I in community in the news section and I'm just gonna read this to you this is her first introduction to them mighty Beckers it's a true pleasure to meet you thank you for embracing me as your new community overlord now kneel before me lesser mighty Nos ha 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 just kidding smiley emoticon my name's Diana Abu Karam and actually it's the other way around I'm here to serve you Think of me as a giant ear, ready to listen to all your suggestions, requests, and anything else you feel like sharing. Except, I'll also be managing and participating in the forums, so I guess think of me as a giant ear with a mouth. Also eyes for looking at fan art and, er, you know what, let's start over. Hi, my name's Dina. Like most of you, I've grown up on video games and have an undying passion for this magical medium. I'm a Zelda fanatic, a Tim Schafer lover, figuratively speaking, an unrepentant Final Fantasy VIII hardliner, no, that's not a troll, winky face emoticon. Also, to clear up any forum confusion, Mega Man X is the best Mega Man. After hopping around the globe a little, I finally left my motherland behind, Lebanon if you're wondering, and settled here in Japan, where I now work at Concept. I'm an artist by trade, which is all the more reason I'm so excited to be a part of this exceptionally creative community. So expect to start seeing a lot of me on the forums, official Facebook page, Twitter account, these updates, etc. Basically anywhere and everywhere Mighty Number no. 9 is. Another emoticon. So yes, think of Dina as one of you, because she was slash is Mighty Number no. 9, 1046 to be exact. And of course the 1046 refers to the backer number she got when she pledged her money. So she was the, I, I'm guessing that's what it is. It's either that or it's the when she registered her account on the website itself. But e either way, that's her position. I think that's how they assign the numbers. Eerie, isn't it, though? It kind of gives you a sense of deja vu, like you've, you've read something like this before, but you can't quite pin your finger on it. Almost like this should be signed uh, to Penguin of Doom, maybe. I don't know. Well, let's go back to the forums now. Like I said, they're they're waiting for Dina to respond. They're waiting to get some kind of idea of what uh, what's going on here exactly. Now, in the meantime, while they're waiting for that response in between mod snark from other assholes on the website itself, uh, people notice something. M maybe you noticed it when I was reading that intro. The uh, bit there about also to clear up any uh, forum confusion, Mega Man X is the best Mega Man? Yeah, that particular part. Because it doesn't jive with what she was putting up on her Twitter. She doesn't play Mega Man, and yet she's telling people what the best Mega Man is. This comes off as disingenuous, like a, a lie. Again, a terrible thing to do if you're the community manager, if you're the person who is part of the outreach towards the backers from the company itself. So now this really pisses them off. As if all these other things aren't irritating enough, as if they're not worried about enough things already, now it appears that she's fucking lying to them. This of course leads to even more posts, uh, with more people starting to get even more agitated. And then finally, and again, this is last night for context of when this is all taking place. Uh, she finally shows up. Now, again, she's in Japan, so it'd be morning for her. You, you know, you've got that hour difference going on, so that's probably why it took so long. And finally, we're going to get her response. Great. What does she say? How does she? How does she quell this uprising? Here's her chance to vindicate herself. How does she respond? By locking her Twitter. You know, let me say that again. All of these people who have seen all of her posts, all of the contradictions, all of the crazy shit that's kind of popping up, she locks her Twitter. That's her first response. As you might imagine, this wasn't um, met with cheers of adulation from the forum posters. But uh, fear not, she finally does show up. She even creates a topic. Hi, Dina here, ask away. In which she admits that she did in fact lock her Twitter. But she says that uh, she just woken up and she was bombarded by all of these questions and all this activity and she freaked out a little bit so she locked it but you know what she's gonna unlock it it was a simple mistake cut her a little bit of slack she's here to answer your questions and uh, maybe we can move forward with this except for one little problem you see in between the time that people started asking her questions and she started providing the answers 
This is after her post about locking down her Twitter, and she's going to unlock it ASAP. It took her about, I'd say, a half an hour to an hour to unlock the Twitter. And when she finally did unlock it, lo and behold, what happens? All those tweets have mysteriously disappeared. Now, of course, this is the Internet, and anything you put out there is never going to disappear. There's always going to be some form of evidence. There's going to be some footprint left behind of your activity. And the forum posters have that evidence. In fact, that's one of the first questions they ask. What the hell? You know, one, why did you lock your Twitter? And then two, when you finally unlocked it, why did you delete all of this? You know, this is really looking bad. I, again, they've been going over this stuff for hours now. And it's not just the, the forum users on the website itself, not just the backers. But people on multiple websites have been kind of reading through this stuff and really just kind of dumbstruck at, you know, the blatant uh, lies that she's kind of put out there and the blatant confusion going around of, you know, how did you get this job? That That's another question that people really wanted an answer to. How did you get hired for this? There were other people putting out better artwork. Um, you know, there were, there were more qualified people to be uh, an intermediate between the English and the Japanese, even though Inafune is kind of known as being a, a Westaboo, so maybe he hired her because he wanted that connection to the market. Who knows? Another thing to consider, too, is people were picking apart her tweets while this is all going on, and they found something in that first one where she talks about not being a Mega Man player, specifically that very last line where she's talking about she's supporting it because her friend slash BF work there or are working on it. Well, now on top of everything else, on top of the feminism and the social justice, on top of wanting to switch genders, on top of locking and then deleting tweets and refusing to answer questions and then finally showing up, uh, you know, all of this stuff, um, on top of all of that, now it looks like nepotism's at play. Now it looks like this is how she got the job. Here's, here's the answer to the question people were trying to figure out. How the hell did she get hired? You know, what were her qualifications? Well, apparently... Her qualifications were either knowing and or dating somebody at the company itself. So finally, after waiting so long, after all these people had asked all these questions, after they'd kept posting and digging through all this information, she responds. And what is her response? Yep, it was nepotism. Yes, I did know people there. Uh, yes, I had an in. Now, she doesn't outright say this is nepotism. She just says, yeah, it was known that I knew people who worked there. It was known that I had relationships with people who were part of the uh, development team. And uh, that got my foot in the door. And it's not a big deal. We all joke about it. You know, yuck, yuck. It's fucking funny. And there's also one other post where she details taking down the tweets because she wanted to, as she put it, uh, create a division between her personal and professional life. And that was uh, one of the steps involved in doing it. As you might imagine, the issue isn't really resolved. Uh, people are still left with kind of a bitter taste in their mouth, because when you look at this situation, what do you have? Th there are a lot of weird things going on here. Uh, the very first introduction to th this person, right, to Dina, was her post on the backer portion of the Kickstarter, where she said this is how she felt and they should really change it. Now ask yourself, why should you even put that up on the Kickstarter? I mean, why, why even go through those motions? She already knows people at the company. So why is she pretending like she doesn't have a direct input into the development team? She does. You know, it's almost like she's trying to garner sympathy or garner attention from the public to try to build up some kind of persona that she can use later on. And here's a person who admits they don't play Mega Man. They weren't a Mega Man fan. Now they backpedal a little bit and say, oh, well, I didn't play the classic Mega Mans. I only played Mega Man X. So then when you said Mega Man X is the best game, what you really meant was it's the only one you've ever fucking played. This is a person who was first introduced to everybody as pushing forward this idea of we need to change the genders, we need to get a strong woman in there. But as we come to find out, she knows people on the development team that got her job there. She had tweets talking about social justice stuff, and now they're, you know, conveniently gone. But that's because she wants to separate the personal and professional. Can you imagine how this must feel, having given money to this project. This is a person who stands as the gatekeeper between the community and the developer. And she's already been caught lying and fudging the truth and, you know, refusing to answer things and deleting embarrassing things and just stalling for time and, you know, trying to play it off like it's not a big deal and everything's okay and we're all relaxed and you guys, you know, just need to calm it down. Just bring it down just a tad. 
So where this goes from now, I can't really say. This all just developed last night. Will it die down? Will it continue? Who knows? I have a feeling this is going to be a point of contention for quite some time to come. And on the one hand, I feel really bad for these people. They gave a lot of money, $3.8 million, and all they wanted, the only thing they asked for, was a successor to Mega Man. They just wanted a game to play. And now it seems like somebody with an agenda, somebody with an idea they want to push, is now in a position where they can get in between that dream, that, that uh, desire of the community, and its realization in the hands of the actual developer of it. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, they should have listened. He tried to warn them. This is the future they chose. Deal with it. You want to know why? 